Okay, so you can see that you'll be presented with this uh, after you've uh, kind of created your UVs. It can be a little bit annoying, and really, what you should have to do is just um, come back here and basically relink the textures. What I've found is by breaking it off, it's kind of given us a few issues. So, best thing to do: uh, show just polygons. Select all of the objects that we're using within this projection. Right-click, create new material. Sign Lambert, there we go. Back in this color, uh, check a box, right click, create this projection, and then just basically relink it, and that should be it. Just another one of my as many um, isms, I suppose. Um, there you go. So everything's linked back up now. It's doing what it should have done previously. Uh, I did think it could have been an issue with the lighting, but it uh, wasn't. So I removed that light. So what I've done is I've just reintroduced that light. So yeah. Right. So okay, that's kind of neat. <clears throat> what we're going to do now is select all of the objects, and what we could do is go to poly modeling, and we'll just combine everything. So we've got one nice big mesh, and if we go to Windows Model and Editor, UV Editor, and let's just very quickly automatic UV it. I'm not really that bothered. Okay, we're having the same kind of who heart again I guess select it if this happens right click uh, assign right click assign new material and then just a Lambert and then just relink it it's likely to happen um, so just something that you're aware of set it to camera and relink it back to the camera you use to project the texture um, Chernobyl bush done Lovely, great. Right, so this is one model. Hit edit, delete by type history. You shouldn't get any kind of weirdness now. Let's, for argument's sake, say that we are happy with this model now. I'm kind of, that's fine. I can live with that. Yeah, okay, there's a few little things that we could maybe tweak, like, um, you know, this uh, sort of the textures here, but this is what we're going to look at now. So, we've got our model UV'd. So, if we go to modeling, UV edited, let's just double check. Yeah, it's uh, you look at that and you think, well, whoa, what the hell? This doesn't kind of line up with this, so this doesn't matter. This is ineffective at the minute, this uh, this UV tile. And you can see what will end up happening is when we uh, bake the textures into the mesh. So that's the next stage of this. Um, so what we would do is um, select the mesh, go to Windows, um, render and edit a hypershade, and with our model selected, <coughs> Hold shift and select the, um, let's just double check to see which texture we've got assigned now. Lambert 4, hold shift, select Lambert 4, and then go to edit, convert to file texture Maya software in this little checkbox, really important, and 2048 by 2048 in a JPEG, that's totally fine. Hit convert and close, and what it's going to do is it's going to save our textures to our newly created UVs that we've just created so when you looked at the image before the textures didn't look like they were particularly well applied or applied at all it just looked very very random and um, whereas now you should see um you should see a lot of relevant sort of placement of the the uvs and the textures so yeah that should be done all good what we can do as well just while we need delete unused nodes and it'll tidy up uh, the hyper shade as well I'm just going to close that down, and you can see there, great, um, our model has, let's go into UV Editor, now you can see this is what I was saying before, before it just didn't really make any sense, it wasn't very readable, whereas now it kind of does make more sense in that the textures and models are projected onto where they should be. Um, okay, there's a few issues that we need to kind of iron out, and that is a lot of this is in here where these textures have been sort of reprojected onto the mesh. But we can do that within Maya, pretty much, um, within reason. So what we can do is let's um, just show this little wall here. If we go to rendering, texturing, 3D paint tool, <coughs> and oh, it's gone really dark, which is totally fine. Let's just um, scroll down, clone, um, this is the brush that we're going to be using, the clone brush, and let's just reset the tool first, 
I'm going to set this to clone and what we basically need to do is set a clone point much like in Photoshop and that's ultimately what we're going to be doing so I'm going to set a clone point I'm going to select this point here and we're just going to kind of paint down there we go so it's just basically like what you would get in Photoshop but allowing us to paint directly onto the 3d mesh so now those textures are pretty much baked it you can see it's quite soft it's a bit of a pain in the arse. It's ultimately to do with the brush. So what we could do is go to set source, try that again, and then try to paint. And there we go. We're getting a much better. Uh, seems to be a bit sharper the the kind of image that we're getting. So that we might. There's only so far that you can take this within my. I mean, the tools aren't great, but it's useful. It's 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 got its place, I suppose. So we can kind of blend that in a little bit more. So, yeah, so you can see um, there might be more benefit to kind of using other patches as well as opposed to just this um, patch that we've created there so there you go you can see like here um, yeah and then you might need to kind of swap it out with like this sort of softer brush to try to blend these elements in and let's maybe set the clone point to something like down here because we want to try to hide that repetition maybe shading wireframe unshaded so we cannot sort of see what we're, we're looking at but this is really really useful we can just kind of grab these bits and pieces and then just um, it takes a little bit to get your head around this because it's basically using the texture from this 3D space over here. So let's just grab this. And it looks a little strange sometimes. It looks like it's kind of melting. Or someone's having a dirty protest, that's kind of what it looks like. So let's just have a little look here. That looks really, really annoying. It's probably because of the perspective shift that I've got on it. So what you might be better off doing is um, moving the camera a little bit. So try to keep it as flat or as near flat as possible. Grab this little patch, paint it there, there. That's better. It's be it seems better probably you're still getting like a bit of a weird gloopy kind of thing going on but it's it's usable you know then once you've got this done in Maya we could then take this out of uh, Maya and then put it into Photoshop and then sort of add any any further kind of details to be totally honest with you the tools within Maya for this kind of thing are pretty poor um, they're okay they're very basic um, but yeah but the point I was making is now that these UVs are correctly placed we can then start to um, yeah grab bits and pieces from here and then start to paint up here so you can see there I'm working with like that flat part of the image and we're getting much better results there now so this is obviously not what I'm looking to do I'm just trying to illustrate this to you so and obviously there we've basically removed or looking to remove and so what we could do as well is face Let's just isolate this selection so that it makes life a little bit easier for us. Six, and then, <coughs> yeah, so let's have a little look at this tool texture and 3D paint tool. Come back in here and then set the source and then just start painting. And obviously, that part of the mesh isn't any longer getting in our way now, so it makes life much, much easier for us. So, it's quite useful, quite handy still do get that weird kind of melted effect <clears throat> so clone this just grab this and then yeah it's kind of neat and then just get used to changing the brush the, like I say it's not an amazing tool it can pull you out of, um, out of the situation if, if you kind of need to to get some textures painted on Um, and there you just set that clone tool again and there you go so you can continue to do that again 
it, it's very odd it does look like a very i wonder if it's just like an update thing um but it looks like it's kind of melted or the brushes made out of cheese or something um yes yeah, so that's kind of useful let's just get rid of this bit here but I would recommend maybe just getting things initially set up like this and then you can go back over it in Photoshop and sort of tidy things up so like here um, you know this is where it might be we might get some quite interesting results so if we set the clone position just up here and then let's just sort of stamp that out so there we go so it's very very quick I mean there we go so set the clone source maybe set the clone source maybe like something up here and then maybe we want to just paint directly over the mesh so sort of here so it's really really nice really really cool but again you, it's something that you could revisit within um, Photoshop you know you, once you've got these textures sort of painted on um, so set this and then I'll go just gentle gentle and set this clone stamp just to, we're just trying to hide um, these things because effectively what this is going to do it's going to buy us that um, additional movement that we, we weren't really afforded very much so um, let's have a look at this again set clone stamp tool and then let's just sort of paint on here it's probably going to start pulling bits from this wall you can see that there so it starts to go a bit weird so you, you're better off keeping it relative to um, that particular part of the mesh um, and you can see there's a difference in the color values as well like this blend in here so I'd recommend you just look at those um, again Photoshop is your friend you can see there you're getting a bit of a harsh sort of join there so set this uh, tool there to just kind of blend it and it's not perfect I'm not pretending that it is but it's it gives us enough to work with now um, up here as well we've got this sort of weird stretched texture set the clone stamp tool and then you could effectively kind of look to paint it's not pretty but it's getting more textural information on onto the model so you could then start to paint it's basically projecting from like a 2.5d um, view But any texture information is better than that smear. Um, so let's have a little look. Set the clone stamp tool, and then let's just sort of paint it up. Smaller little brush strokes seem to be the way to go when it's sort of as skewed as it is. It seems to play a little nicer with what you're getting. While it's not perfect, it's still giving you something that's a little more usable. Um, And again, it's it's down to how uh, skewed the UVs are. So if you haven't set the UVs up properly, you will get uh, different sort of results with that as well. So let's just kind of keep building this. Out. So it's it's very quick. I mean, like I said, the main thing is you were able to then um, basically paint directly onto the model like this. It's quite. It's not the best. But it's something from this model that we can then pull out, pull into um, in a, a Photoshop or Mudbox or, or whatever you want to do. But we've got something that's a little bit more usable. Like so, here we've got these little bits of tree branch that are kind of being cloned in. We could maybe look to remove those. Which okay, it's kind of working, pretty handy. Um, same again like here and 
and there we go so while not perfect it's given us something us usable and if we select edit delete by type history so before let's just um i don't think i have the mesh sort of as it was before let's go to perspective and let's duplicate this this is our baked mesh where we can kind of move around let's um reassign create a new material lambert and with this let's um, go to right click create this projection just to show you what we can now do with this and then relink it up to this image so it should there we go so so you see the difference let's say we wanted to create a new camera for this but we wanted to have some camera movement of this scene um, so it might be kind of useful for some people maybe not for others um, let's say uh, select camera uh, frame one I've just hit s there for uh, quickness up this to 200 frames and then let's say we wanted to move through well straight away obviously auto keys on the illusion kind of falls apart a little bit so let's create a new camera again and let's sort of move this over here now now that we've kind of painted up the texture a little bit more obviously not not finished I'm not expecting um, it to win any kind of awards or anything like that but now you know the illusion isn't half as um, you know, let's sort of take off wireframe unshaded and then maybe viewport 2.0 put in a bit of um, ambient occlusion bit of AO um, and then there we go so we can start to just in terms of uh, visualizing things it's quite a useful sort of tool I mean it's it's not perfect but it's it gives you an understanding of how you might use that um yeah okay you could kind of chop things out down there the windows you could add a, an external scene here um yeah okay so hopefully that makes sense um how we go about projecting things and you can then sort of see the uh, i guess the limitations if it was just baked in and you do need to do that additional bit of kind of painting out of the textures but it'll give you a little bit more flexibility in you know if you're wanting to create something from it um like a scene or whatever i mean you could obviously have lots of different things you know these need work but it still is usable um obviously you just need to look at painting these textures up a little more okay hopefully that was some help um and yeah i'll, I'll be putting lots of these videos together for you okay take care bye